Uh, my name is Josh Berger. I'm the police chief here for the Pasadena Police Department. I'm, I want to welcome you all out here today. Um, this is one of the good things I get to do as chief. Uh, yesterday was a promotion. Today's an award ceremony. Um, so these are the, the fun things um, that I get to do. It, it, it's a pleasure of mine really to get to recognize these men and women that are sitting up here for the good work that, that they are going to be recognized for. But really more importantly, the good work that goes on here every day in the police department that really goes unrecognized. And it's a, a true testament to the professionalism of the men and women of the department uh, because when they, they go above and beyond, they don't do it for the recognition. They do it because it's the right thing to do. And oftentimes, a lot of it goes unrecognized just because we don't know about it. And, you know, in, in these situations, somebody usually was in the right place at the right time to catch it and write it up and recognize them. But uh, it just... It, it makes me really proud of the, of the good work that happens every day. We have a long tradition of, of excellent police work. Um, I always say it's what sets us apart from a lot of other law enforcement agencies is we go above and beyond. Um, we get there quickly. And one of the things that I preach is, you know, treating folks, citizens that you come in contact with, would want your family member treated in a similar circumstance. And so um, they really do take that to heart and, and they do go above and beyond. Um, one of the other things that I did this year was I created a, a challenge coin, a Chief's Challenge coin, I saw it scrolling through up here. Um, and it was really one more way to uh, recognize um, the men and women when they go above and beyond. And, you know, working for the government, I, I can't give them pay raises usually, I can't give them a bonus, but um, a pat on the back really goes a long way. And we had a sergeant that just promoted yesterday. When I was meeting with him this morning, the one thing I was telling him was, we all have to do a better job of recognizing the good work that happens here every day. And um, a, a kind word really goes a long way, and I think we underestimate the value of that sometimes, or something as simple as just a kind word or recognizing somebody for what they do. Um, the awards that we're going to present today are the Community Impact Award, the Outstanding Performance Award, the Meritorious Service Award, and the Leadership Award. The first award I'm going to present today is the Community Impact Award. Let me tell you what this award uh, is presented for. The Community Impact Award is designed to honor and recognize members of the Pasadena Police Department for their contributions and volunteer services to improve the quality of life for the citizens of Pasadena. Any member may be nominated for this award when during the course of their duty they identify and resolve a significant quality of life issue for an individual or group of individuals in the city of Pasadena. Actions taken by the nominee to resolve the problem should be self-initiated and not be required as part of their current assignment. The recipients of the Community Impact Awards are Code Enforcement Officer Shannon Poteet and Code Enforcement Field Supervisor Jeremy Armstrong, as well as David Garcia. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, what they did to deserve uh, these awards. One of the things that I try to preach is, is that we work to solve the underlying problem and not just the symptom of the problem. Because oftentimes we go out there and um, spin our wheels just solving a symptom and, and not investing the time to solve the underlying problem. And what Jeremy and Shannon did is truly solve an underlying problem. And I'll tell you a little bit about both of them and what they did, and then um, I'm probably gonna add to it because it's pretty significant what they did. If Jeremy and Shannon will come stand right up here for me, please. <coughs> tell you a little bit about Jeremy first. Jeremy has been employed with the city of Pasadena since 2011. He started working as a dispatcher and a jailer before becoming a code enforcement officer. Jeremy has been as been in his current code enforcement position a field supervisor for the past four years. Being born and raised in Pasadena, he takes great pride in the work the code enforcement division does every day for the city. Jeremy's been married to his wife, Kelly, for the past 20 years. They share a 17-year-old son, Aiden, and a 13-year-old son, Sam, and their nephew, Tyler, who also lives with them. Um, Shannon started with the city of Pasadena in 2009 as an animal control officer. Shortly after she was hired, she transferred to the health department where she served as a general sanitation inspector. In 2017, Shannon transferred to the Code Enforcement Department as a Code Enforcement Inspector. Throughout her time with Code Enforcement, Shannon attended various classes and conferences enabling her to achieve her Code Enforcement Officer II designation. Shannon holds that position today and is responsible for proactively addressing an array of violations and responding to citizen complaints via the Mayor's Action Line. Shannon's been married to her husband, Clint, who's a deputy with the Precinct 8 Constable's Office, and I saw somewhere standing in the back. Um, for 25 years. She has two children, Dustin, who's 25 and works for the petrochemical industry, and Taylor, who is 21, is graduating from Texas State University this month. You know, one thing I want to say about code enforcement real quick is, you know, from the TV and the movies, everybody thinks, you know, it's, it's robberies and car chases and everything. And honestly, what we deal with more than anything 
is quality of life issues. And code enforcement um, is that tool that we can send out there to deal with those code enforcement issues because nobody wants the house with the high grass next to them, the junk cars, all of those things. And so um, it oftentimes is a thankless job, um, but they do a great job about it. Um, and they think outside the box um, to solve problems. So let me tell you a little bit about what they're being recognized for. Unfortunately, when a problem house exists in a neighborhood, it severely hinders the amount of enjoyment the surrounding homeowners can have in their homes. One such nuisance residence has plagued Pasadena neighborhood for over five years. And I bet you if you ask just about any policeman here in Pasadena about South Palm Court, they could tell you all about it. Um, in that five years, the residents and its owners were involved in approximately 40 code enforcement cases, 280 police calls for service. That's an average of five calls of service at that address every month for five years. The residence was also expected uh, to be a location of illegal narcotic sales, and the owners regularly provided temporary residence to the criminal element. The residence was truly a nuisance to the neighborhood and our community at large. The decision was made to condemn the residence and serve the occupants with an emergency vacate order, and this was no easy task. Jeremy was instrumental in coordinating the efforts of multiple divisions within the police department in the city of Pasadena to execute the plan. Due to the dual efforts of Shannon and Jeremy, the owner was removed and the residence was deemed unfit to inhabit. Since condemning of the building, Jeremy and Shannon have coordinated the cleanup of the outside of the residence and communicated their continued efforts to the neighbors who have had to endure the problem for years. Once the charges were filed against the owners and the charges were upheld at a hearing with the Building and Standards Commission, the owner agreed to sell the property and voluntarily move out of the neighborhood. Shannon and Jeremy went above and beyond what was required of them in their positions and made a significant impact on the betterment of not only that particular neighborhood, but the larger community of Pasadena as well. It was their dedication to the citizens of Pasadena that earned this, them this community impact award. And I was telling Jeremy, I drove by there on my way out there, um, or on my way out here today, and the house looks completely different. And I was at an event Saturday night, and one of the uh, residents in the neighborhood came up and, and was ecstatic. And that morning when uh, SWAT went out and, and served the warrant there at the house, um, you would have thought the neighbors were going to have a parade for the, for the officers out there because they were so happy and so sick and tired of it. Um, and I got out there about two hours later, and they were still standing out there. The neighbors were thanking everybody, you know, making coffee, you know, breakfast for, for everybody that was out there. They were that appreciative. So um, I, I know the mayor. I'll speak for the mayor on this one, and I, I know he is very appreciative because they were blowing up um, his phone. So, again, congratulations and thank you. Thanks, Yep. Right over here. Here's yours. That one is yours. And here, picture time. Are you, would either of you like to say something? No. <laughs> We talked about that beforehand, and they said no. So, uh, David, if you would come up here, Officer David Garza. <coughs> so I was asking David before I began uh, how many times he's received this award, and this is the third time that he's received this award. Um, and let me tell you a little bit about him, and then I'll, I'll just talk about you know the person that David is or the officer that David is. Officer Garza has been with the police, uh, been a police officer for 33 years, with 26 of those uh, years being with the Pasadena Police Department. He graduated from the 45th Police Academy in 1995. And during his tenure with the department, Officer Garza has worked on all three patrol shifts, as well as the gang task force, street crimes, and the felony warrant units. Officer Garza is currently assigned to the community liaison unit. Officer Garza is thankful for the support of his family throughout his career. He said his children uh, not only supported him through prayer, but also by serving with him in community events such as Thanksgiving and Christmas box meals, Toys for Tots, and back-to-school backpack events. He's thankful for these opportunities which showed his children the true meaning of familia with not only the community but also his brothers and sisters in blue. He credits God with guiding his law enforcement career and appreciates the opportunity of working with his peers who he is proud to call his extended family. Um, and I'll say this about David. Um, at any event that David goes to just about um, these big events, your kids are always there. Um, they're always the first to show up and always the last to leave. Um, so that is a testament to your character and, and how you've raised your children. Let me tell you a little bit about what David did. Every Thanksgiving for the past nine years, an event has taken place called the Blue Family Thanksgiving. This event collects frozen turkeys, stuffing mixes, and all the trimmings and assembles them 
and to prepackage and ready to prepare Thanksgiving dinner boxes. The boxes are then distributed to local agencies and delivered to families in the community in their times of need. Officer Garza founded this event nine years ago outside the normal course of his duties. This past year, not only were a lot more families in need, businesses were struggling to make a profit and stay afloat. The normal monetary donations from local businesses, which Officer Garza could rely on in the past, were dramatically reduced. Instead of giving up and reducing the number of families served, Officer Garza pledged his own personal funds to help as many families as possible. Fortunately, a local business eventually heard about Officer Garza's predicament and reimbursed him later for his personal contribution. Ultimately, the 2020 Blue Family Thanksgiving event served 1,000 th uh, Thanksgiving meals to the community. Officer Garza's willingness to invest a substantial amount of his own money and his time into this cause without the expectation of reimbursement is a true testament to his dedication and service to our community. I'm honored to present Officer David Garza with the Community Impact Award today. Congratulations. Before I hear everybody start groaning, it's only it's under two minutes, so <laughs> I did write a little something. Uh, first, I want to thank God for all of his blessings. Um, I want to thank Chief Ruger and Lieutenant Holt for their past and present support for this event for the last couple of years. Uh, I want to thank David Tong, who's not here, he's a personal friend of mine, for helping me start this event about nine years ago. Uh, we saw it grow from about 10 to 12 dinners to 1,000. Um, I want to thank... Uh, Law enforcement people, my brother and sister, um, Captain Mike Coleman of University of Houston Police Department, uh, Jackie Carter from the Harris County Sheriff's Office. They helped me uh, reach more people through their agencies. Um, there are so many volunteers that, that you know contributed, but uh, some standouts were Crystal Orozco, PSO Crystal Orozco and her family, uh, PSO Monica Puente and her family, as well as Georgia Cook and, and their family, as well as, well as uh, CPAAA. Um, special thanks to uh, Catalina Cardenas and uh, my kids Drew and Luke, and they're the ones you're talking about. We're talking about who's always been there from the very beginning, from really small when they're just running around not helping when they got older, and they actually helped out quite a bit. Um, so they, I've had their support from the very beginning. I want to recognize my son David Garza and uh, his wife Kaylee, my daughter-in-law, my, my granddaughter. Both uh, just recently just got out of the Marines, so they served our, our country well, both of them, and, and I appreciate and love them. And uh, also, uh, I mean, I'm blessed, I'm, I'm, you know, to always have the, my family on my side. Uh, and uh, I don't want to leave somebody out. When Chief and I were discussing this earlier, uh, that, um, oh, by the way, one of my other volunteers, probably in this room, is the mayor. I had him come out a couple of times, and actually helped them put boxes together, so not just sit around and shake hands. So we made them work. So I appreciate it. Thank you. And um, don't want to leave nobody out. Oh, K-Rob, being a really, really good assistant here lately, and uh, he's actually a really good driver for me, too, and I, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much, K-Rob. And last but not least, I want to accept this award on behalf of my mom. <clears throat> Uh, she passed away last year, but I'm thanking her because of the, the, the mom she was and because, you know, she raised me right. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Yep. <clears throat> um, outstanding Performance Award. Officer Ortiz, if you'll come up here for me, please. Officer Ortiz, uh, let me tell you about the Outstanding Performance Award first. This uh, recognition may be awarded to employees, both sworn and civilian, who display a high degree of initiative and professionalism in the performance of their duties. Two officers will be receiving this award today. Uh, it's Officer Jose Ortiz and Officer Jason Mitchell. Officer Ortiz was born and raised in the southeast area of Houston. He graduated from Clearbrook High School in 1995. Immediately after graduating high school, he enlisted in the United States Navy, where he served four years from 1995 to 1999. Following his enlistment in the Navy, Officer Ortiz returned back to Houston, where he attended the Basic Police Academy at the University of Houston downtown. 
After graduating the police academy, Officer Ortiz began his law enforcement career with the city of Stafford Police Department where he worked night shift from 2001 to 2003 before transferring to Pasadena. Officer Ortiz joined the Pasadena Police Department's Modified Academy in 2003 and has since worked mainly on evening shift and night shift patrols. Officer Ortiz is a proud father of three wonderful kids, his daughters Caitlin and Bella and his son Luca Ortiz. I'll tell you a little bit about what he did to uh, be recognized. On September 25, 2020, Officer Ortiz requested to utilize an unmarked vehicle in order to set up surveillance on a family dollar location in the 2200 block of Ritchie. There had been a rash of aggravated robberies of those types of businesses in that store, uh, in, that store in particular. As Officer Ortiz was watching the business, he observed a vehicle matching the description of the one provided by detectives <coughs> working the robbery cases. Once the vehicle parked and the passenger exited, Officer Ortiz noted that the male passenger matched the description of the suspect involved in the robberies. The vehicle, driven by a female, left the parking lot, moved across the street to Walgreens um, while the suspect was still in the store. Officer Ortiz notified dispatch of the events and units were sent to the area. A short time later, the male suspect exited the family dollar and began walking to the Walgreens parking lot where the getaway vehicle was waiting. The suspect entered the waiting vehicle and they proceeded to drive away. A traffic stop was conducted, at which time the male suspect ran from the vehicle with a gun in his hand. Officers were able to quickly set up a perimeter with the help of uh, the Houston Police Department's helicopter unit, and the suspect was located hiding on the roof of a nearby building. The suspect was ultimately taken into custody without incident, and the weapon was recovered. It's my honor to award Officer Ortiz the Outstanding Performance Award today for his proactive initiative, which led to the apprehension of a dangerous suspect who had been involved in several armed robberies, not just in Pasadena, but also in the city of Houston. Congratulations. <laughs> you want to say something? Now, real quick, I just want to, I mean, my sergeant's on evening shift who let me do this, and everybody else, the whole evening shift patrol, because when they take one person off of a district, it kind of makes everybody else have to pick up that extra slack, so I appreciate Sergeant Sanders and all them for letting me, and my oldest daughter's fixing to start college at Texas State, so just so you know, I can go blend in and stuff, and sit there and spy on you too, so just. <laughs> you know, and the one thing about this is that that was all of his initiative, and that's, that's the one thing I want, um, you know, our officers, our first line supervisors doing is when they recognize a problem that they take the initiative to think outside the box and, and solve those problems, and, and clearly it paid off here. Um, Officer Jason Mitchell. Officer Jason Mitchell has been with the department for 20 years, having graduated from the 51st Pasadena Police Academy in 2001. He's currently the department's health and safety officer. Officer Mitchell has been licensed as a paramedic by the state of Texas for over 25 years. He has an extensive background in tactical medicine and has served as a SWAT team medic for 16 years. Throughout his career, Officer Mitchell has served, as, uh, served on patrol, SWAT, SRT, and narcotics, as well as being an adjunct instructor for the Pasadena Police Academy. Officer Mitchell is the point of contact for all medical, bloodborne pathogen, and bioterrorism related issues for the police department. Officer Mitchell is married to Detective Tony Fail, also with the Pasadena Police Department. He has two sons, Hunter and Ty, both whom attend Clear Lake High School. <coughs> I'll tell you a little bit about what Jason uh, did to be recognized. In 2019, the full time position for a department medical officer was created. Due to his experience and training, Officer Mitchell was selected for the role. Um, really, it was a natural fit and, and really. Uh, that there was no one else that had the qualifications he did. In 2020, that position became vital to our department while dealing with unprecedented COVID-19 crisis and pandemic. Protocols and guidelines were rapidly changing and often conflicting. Officer Mitchell was tasked with compiling the available information and being the source of the most current and factual information on the virus at any given time. The screening process was implemented in order to ensure our personnel the safest workplace environment. However, the department still saw its share of positive COVID cases. Once officers started having symptoms, Officer Mitchell was responsible for ensuring the testing of all officers, the completion of the required documentation, the monitoring of staff levels, and the contact tracing of all exposures. The COVID-19 exposure at our own academy here, while cadets were in session, resulted in the shutdown of this entire building, really. Officer Mitchell orchestrated the testing of over 25 employees in two days, 
He kept the division commander, Lieutenant Nabrow, informed and apprised of the evolving situation throughout the entire ordeal. I think Lieutenant uh, Dumbrow summed it up best when he questioned how much more difficult the department's response to the pandemic would have been if we didn't have Officer Mitchell guiding our way, and I couldn't agree more. Um, Officer Mitchell is presented today with the Outstanding Performance Award for his guidance and critical performance during the COVID-19 crisis. Let me say this, I still rely on Jason almost every day right now um, for information. And I'll tell you, we have playbooks for a lot of stuff in law enforcement. Send us a hurricane, we've got it. Um, you know, flooding, we've got it. Um, but when this was thrown our way, and really the entire world, it's something that we have never dealt with before. Um, our response was not always perfect. Our response at times was clumsy. Um, but I will say this, it, it, we, it was well-intentioned, and we operated with the best information that we had, which sometimes would change 30 minutes later. Um, but we adapted, and we overcame through all of it. And I, I know that I would not have been able to get through it without Jason's guidance um, and support throughout. So I personally want to thank you, uh, in addition to recognizing you. Congratulations. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Slide over. There you go. <laughs> you want to say something? You know, this COVID mess, if you want to call it that, has been a bit of a learning curve for all of us. Um, it's been a team effort. If it's not myself, the health department, HR, the mayor's office, we've all worked together as a team. It's one of the things we did early on that I think worked well was uh, putting a team of the best we could get and uh, kind of come up with game plans. Those game plans changing, like the chief said, um, almost definitely daily at times. And, you know, the the ability for the department to adapt as often as we had to and to change on a daily basis is a testament to everybody that works here. Um, it's not just me, it's a team effort throughout and uh, it means a lot getting it, so thank you, sir. The next award is the Merit Meritorious Service Ribbon. This ribbon may be awarded to any officer who is wounded or injured during the performance of duty, uh, performance of duty while on duty, and the wound or injury to the officer was sustained while the officer was engaged in normal and expected officer safety practices. This ribbon is being awarded to officers Federico Cruz and Michael Ludicky. If you two will come up here for me, please. <coughs> Tell you a little bit about uh, Officer Cruz first. Officer Cruz graduated from the 69th Modifi Modified Academy class in 2015. He came to the Pasadena Police Department with four years prior law enforcement. Officer Cruz was born in Corpus Christi and moved to the Houston area in 2008. He graduated from the University of Houston Clear Lake with a bachelor's degree in criminology. Officer Cruz has worked patrol for the entirety of his career. In the past, he served on evening shift, but his current assignment is day shift patrol. Officer Cruz is a field training officer and loves training the new probationary police officers. He's married to Ashley, who supports him in every way possible, which is extremely important in this line of work. And they have two daughters, 15-year-old Bella and 12-year-old Lillian and 8-year-old Lila. <coughs> officer Ludicky began his career with the Pasadena Police Department as a public service officer in 2007. Officer Ludicky later applied to and was accepted into the 64th Pasadena Police Academy. He graduated in July of 2009 and hit the streets as a police officer. Officer Ludicky has spent most of his career on night shift patrol although he's worked all three shifts throughout his tenure. Officer Ludicky's father was a Pasadena police officer for 30 years before retiring, and I saw him somewhere. There you are. Um, and Officer Ludicky is proud to follow in his father's footsteps. Officer Ludicky is engaged to his fiancee, Stacy. Between, between the two of them, they are raising their blended family, which consists of seven-year-old Emmeline uh, Kaysen, uh, who's six, and Kaiser, who is three months old. And let me tell you a little bit about what they did. On October 27, 2020, a call was received regarding a male at an apartment complex who had exposed himself to a female resident. Officer Cruz responded to the scene, but the male had already left the area. Unable to locate the suspect, Officer Cruz collected the necessary information and went back into service. Short time later, Officer Cruz was dispatched to the same apartment complex in regards to the same male suspect. Upon returning to the complex, Officer Cruz located the male who matched the description provided by the victim during the first call for service. The victim confirmed that the suspect was the same one who had exposed himself to her earlier and she wished to pursue charges for indecent exposure. Officer Cruz questioned the suspect who denied the allegation. Officer Cruz identified the suspect and learned that he was a registered sex offender. 
The suspect became irate and stated he was not going back to jail. When officers Cruz and Ludicky attempted to arrest the suspect, he resisted and placed his hand, his right hand, into his back pocket. Officer Cruz patted down the suspect's pocket twice in an attempt to see if he was reaching for a weapon. He didn't feel anything at the time. Officer Cruz and Ludicky had to take the suspect to the ground in order to restrain him. Although Officer Ludicky had control of the suspect's left arm, the suspect's right hand was still concealed inside of his pocket. During the confrontation, the suspect was able to remove a homemade knife, which was, he was concealing in his hand in his pocket. The suspect punctured Officer Cruz's hand with a knife. Officer Cruz did not realize that he had been stabbed and injured until the suspect was successfully placed in handcuffs. It was then that the officer noticed blood on his hand and the homemade knife on the ground. Officer Ludicky was also injured by the knife during the struggle and received a laceration to his arm. The suspect was ultimately cha charged with aggravated assault on a police officer. The suspect's criminal history showed numerous charges for violent felonies. It's my honor to present Officer Cruz and Officer Ludicky with a meritorious service uh, ribbon today uh, to recognize the danger they encountered and the injuries they sustained that day while removing a dangerous felon from our community. Congratulations. So, so one thing I want to say first, um, when this happened, it, it's right down the street from the station. So I went out there and uh, uh, Officer Cruz, um, for, for <laughs> he's smiling now, for, for what he had gone through, he was angry. Um, that he had allowed it to happen. Um, and he, it was absolutely nothing that he had done. Um, he did everything that he could, but still, you always, you know, you want to prevent things like this. And, and he, was, he was upset, um, but in good spirits. And so I, you, you do a good job every day. Your supervisors speak very highly of you, actually of both of you. So thank you for that. <coughs> Centered up. Uh, she can't skip you in the middle of this side. Oh, excellent. Here we go, ready, one, two, three. Awesome, thank you. Perfect. Congratulations. Thanks, sir. Anyone say something? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, Richard Willie, will you make your way up here? Richard Willie is receiving the Leadership Award, and this award is designed to honor and recognize a supervisor who consistently adheres to the department's values while supporting the mission through positive leadership and managerial practices. The nominee should demonstrate a unique blend of human relations skills and knowledge of the division unit, coupled with the ability to apply problem-solving and communication skills to the successful management of their employees. This person is able to balance the goals of the department with the individual goals of the employees. Richard was supposed to receive this award back in November, I believe. He had a conflict and couldn't be there. And so, um, I'll just, a little bit of context. Uh, he is now the chief of the city marshals, but prior to that, um, he served out here at the academy um, and, and was a sergeant over the training staff. And that's what he's gonna receive the award for. Um, b before, I give him this, I really would be remiss if I didn't recognize him for the leadership that he's been providing over at the city marshal's office since he took over. Um, it, they have uh, really, you have turned the organization upside down in a good way um, over there and, and really, you know, got them back on their mission and put them out there. Um, they've been on four wheelers in the parks, um, it's just been visible. Anything that we've needed, um, problem solving, anything, um, Richard has always um, been the first to step up and, and you know I know a lot of his city marshals here and and you guys have done an excellent job um, the last how long have you been there seems almost like a year. almost a year yeah um, it, it has been a night and day difference and so I, I really appreciate the work that you all have done um, during that time I'll tell you about Richard Richard uh, has served the Pasadena Police Department for 30 years he started in the department as a civilian where he worked as a dispatcher and a jailer. He then attended the 47th Police Academy and served on all three patrol shifts as a bike officer and as a field training officer. Next, Richard served as a patrol sergeant, completed over a decade in various assignments and investigations. Afterward, he served as the Academy's training coordinator during um, an assignment at the Police Academy. He currently serves as the Chief City Marshal and Director of Code Enforcement. He holds a bachelor's and master's degree in criminal justice, is a graduate of the FBI's National Academy and Sam Houston State's Law Enforcement Management Institute of Texas. Like I said, prior to uh, Chief Willie joining the city marshals, uh, he was with the police department. 
Just before his promotion to chief, Chief Willie was assigned to the Pasadena Police Academy. Um, at that time, the academy was having a difficult time recruiting. Um, the civil service test in place was eliminating approximately 50% of the applicants at the beginning of the application process. At the same time, the physical fitness standards used to test applicants were outdated. Chief Willie and his staff researched the testing companies in an effort to find a more reliable written test. After selecting a different testing company, the passing rate on the written exam increased to 70% with no decline in the quality of applicants. Chief Willie also adopted the DPS rowing machine standards for use in not only the application process, but as an ongoing annual test of current officers' physical fitness. Chief Willie's forward thinking led to the first program in the history of the department to mandate physical fitness standards for all officers, not just candidates. Chief Willie also had a major role in the collaborative effort to rewrite the police department's local civil service rules. They hadn't been updated in over 50 years. Um, and to say they were disorganized is an understatement. Um, this task took several months to complete, uh, with Chief Willie responsible to ensuring that the adopted rules met TCOL and federal hiring standards. When you consider that Chief Willie implemented all these changes in a little over a year, the feat is certainly nothing short of remarkable. The new testing uh, is in place, the hiring process is running much more smoothly with a surplus of qualified applicants, and the local civil service rules are updated and modernized, all of which is a testament to the outstanding job Chief Willie did as a first-line supervisor at the Academy. In an effort to keep improving the Academy and the training of the cadets, Chief Willie implemented several innovative procedures like journaling and exit interviews for the cadets to get feedback on the classes, lessons, and Academy staff. Chief Willie also gave the Academy staff instructors latitude to develop our very broad training programs without unnecessary restrictions. Chief Willie takes his own training and self-improvement very seriously. He attended the Leadership Command College and the FBI National Academy, and he was recently, at least at the time of this, uh, honored as the Outstanding Graduate Student of the Year from the University of Houston downtown as he completed his master's degree in criminal justice, all while working and um, family and all of those things too. Um, a good leader looks not only to improve his or her surroundings, but also of themselves. And it's for all of these reasons and a whole bunch more that Chief Willie uh, is recommended for the Leadership Award while serving as a sergeant at the Academy, and I couldn't agree with the recommendation even more. And it's an honor to award you with it. Thanks, sir. Yep. First, I want to thank all of you for being here today, taking your time to come celebrate this with us. Um, also, just briefly, I want to say a, an interesting thing that I've learned about leadership is it's easier to accomplish when you're surrounded by people who want to see you succeed. And I am truly a victim of that. Uh, without the support of Mayor Wagner, Chief Brueger, Lieutenant Dombroa, and the Academy staff, the things you just heard about wouldn't have been achieved. Um, and finally, I'll tell you that I absolutely love my new Marshall and Code Enforcement family who are all here today to celebrate this with me. Um, but to the Academy staff, and they've snuck in, they're back there against the back wall. Uh, I truly miss you guys every day. And uh, thank you for our time together. Thank you. One more time for all the award recipients, please. Again, on behalf of the group up here, I want to thank you all for coming out. I know it means a lot um, for your support. Um, don't run off. There's cake and punch out in the hallway. I think this is the fourth day of cake and punch between retirements, promotions, award ceremony. Um, I'm going to have to get out to the academy and run. Um, but again, thank you all for coming, and again, congratulations to you all. Thank you.